Welcome back to building modern line of business applications with Visual Studio 2010. My name is Orville McDonald and I'm a product manager with Visual Studio and this will be the final installment of our series on building business applications using Visual Studio 2010. In previous sessions I showed a few things. Uh, one, how to get started using Silverlight business application project templates. With that, then being able to bind data using designers and properties and really connect with data that sat within a SQL database in my application. Then also adding validation and the ability to update. In this step, what we'll do is we'll show authentication and personalization. The cool thing with using, let me see that piece again. The great thing with leveraging uh, authentication within your modern line of business application is that it actually uses the same authentication model as is used in ASP.NET in addition to the personalization. So if you're familiar with doing any type of authentication with ASP.NET, your existing skills will work here as well. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go back to my Northwind service VB file. I got a little nag window. Let me close that. So now that I have this open, let me scroll to the very top. And we'll see right here that I have our requires authentication. It's already been uh, commented out for me. So what I want to do is I actually want to add it back right there. And now with that, it's going to now require authentication for my application. So let's run this and see actually what happens at this point. Now we can see that I actually get a dialog box. And in the dialog box, I actually get an error denied. This is telling me that I actually need to be authenticated to the application in order to use it. So if I go and I say OK to that one, let me click on Login. We notice that we also get a login screen. And as you may remember, I haven't written any code to do this. This actually comes for free as part of, the, as part of using a Silverlight business application project type. So I'm going to go register myself as a user. So I'll enter my name. My friendly name is Orville as well. I'll enter an email address. Let me add a password, which I'm sure no one out there is going to write down. Enter a secret question. I'll just pick anyone. And for now, since it's demonstration purposes, I'll just type anything in there. Click OK. And what it's doing now is that, in this case, because I'm in debug mode and it's my first time using the authentication feature, it's actually established that uh, database for me. So if I close this, let me reload it. get my error message, say OK, click login, time for me to log in. In this case, I actually want to stay signed in. That, let me refresh the page. And we can see that I get all of my customer details again. So you can see that was actually pretty simple, the ability to require authentication and just by uncommenting requires authentication I now have all this uh, functionality that allows me to authenticate users. So now that I'm able to authenticate to this another thing that would be great is if I could actually personalize it to suit my personal taste. In this case what I may want to do is I want to personalize it to allow me to set my own background color almost like I'm setting the mood for my business application. So what I want to do in this case is I'm going to go through and I'm going to make a few more changes and I'm going to start off by going to my web.config. We'll open it here. This is kind of your standard web.config. And what I want to change is I actually want to go down to my profile properties and I want to add a new one. You see here that I've now added this property called background color. In this case, the default color is always going to be white. Another thing that I want to do to make sure that this actually gets used is I have to go back up within my models 
update my user.vb file. And in this case, what I'm going to update it to do is to include an additional property. So I have my background color. And let me actually save this. And I want to save my web.config as well. Now, with, now that I have this property set, I need some way that I could actually go and select a new user preference and take advantage of that. So I'm going to start off by going to my main page, which actually I have open right over here. So within my main page, I'm going to go and I'm going to add this. Let's click it uh, right up there. So I've added a new grid element. Or actually, sorry, I included that in the wrong spot. So I'm going to delete that top one that one my new grid uh, layout route so this what we'll do is I'll take a look and make sure it takes advantage of those preferences that I just finished setting so now that I've added a bit of my plumbing the next thing I need to do is the ability to get that user input to go and uh, make those changes so in that case if I go back to my different options I have this about page and with the about page I actually really don't use it there's nothing special that I, I'm doing with it so I'm going to actually go through and update this one. Let me start off by uh, deleting a few things. Then I want to look at only my XAML. So this is what I'm going to end up changing. And the first thing I want to do is I actually want to add an additional namespace. Go through there. So I have my additional namespace. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the code for the user to change their preferences. So I have that in there. Let me take a look at it in the designer. I can see I have a background color. I have a save button. So now it looks like I have everything I need. The final thing left to do is actually run my application. Now with our application up and running, you can see it's the exact same application we were looking at before. As I click on customers, we can see all the customer details. However, in this case, we're actually going to do something different. So if I click on about, we can see that we have a background color. In this case, it's set to white. And I'm going to change it to a different color. So I'm going to choose purple. We can see that now it's purple. I could change it to another color as well. In this case, I'm going to set it to orange sets it to orange and as I go back and I play with my application we notice that it's now skinned to be orange and this is clearly a very basic example and you could add additional personalization on top of it so we've covered quite a few things and I'm happy that you've joined me for all of these different sessions we've seen how by starting from file new we were able to go create a very simple business application using data that sits in a database that we already have in this case it was the Northwind database uh, we were ex able to expose it using an ADO.NET entity data model, so it was a local representation of our data within our application. At that point, we were also able to expose it through our domain service, which said how which tables we were able to get information from and which ones we were able to edit. With that, we then added uh, data grids and data details, updated our queries, so that way we really had kind of the data that we needed when we needed. We were able to add further customization using paging, we also were able to update our data with intelligence to know when the data has truly been updated versus just having been in one of the screens. And then the final thing we ended up doing is we added authentication and personalization to our application. I hope you enjoyed these sessions. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact me as my contact information will be showing up shortly. And best of luck developing business applications with Visual Studio 2010. Take care.